I do two things in a trichoscopy now. One, uh, I see a big need for learning trichoscopy by uh, many dermatologists and uh, I try to give lectures and to uh, develop some teaching devices because I think this is a useful method for the dermatologist and, uh, and I do my best to, to teach people who want to learn trichoscopy to uh, learn the method. I would like to use this opportunity to say that trichoscopy is a good, a perfect method, in my opinion, in the hands of a dermatologist or a dermatology resident. You have to have profound dermatology knowledge to be able to perform trichoscopy. You cannot just learn trichoscopy not being prepared with the dermatological background. So this is a method for dermatologists. So one thing I do is teaching trichoscopy and then there is still very much what is, what is in, not discovered in trichoscopy and uh, my group uh, in my department is working on new developments in trichoscopy. We, we are working uh, for example on how we can monitor with the, uh, with the use of trichoscopy and how trichoscopy can be a good prognostic method for, uh, for treatment of diseases. So these are our, our uh, research tasks which I think uh, may be useful for the clinical practice for the future. Well, regarding um, trichology and um, regarding my interest in hair, uh, it's, um, uh, it's quite simple because I bought a dermoscope to, uh, to observe skin cancer and melanoma. It was many, many years ago. And then by accident, I looked at hair through a dermoscope and I got fascinated because I thought that hair looks so beautiful under a dermoscope that I thought that maybe we can distinguish some diseases with the help of a dermoscope. But uh, if I have some time to say a little bit more, I always tell my young colleagues, don't uh, have the ambition to recognize every disease when you start to doing trichoscopy. Look at healthy scalp, look at every patient who comes with anything to your office, take a look and to learn how normal hair looks in a dermoscope. And uh, when you know how a normal hair looks in the dermoscope, then you can distinguish what is abnormal and then you can start distinguishing the abnormalities. Of course, first I will name trichoscopy, which is my favorite uh, part of, uh, of trichology. But I think the second thing is that I think we are capable of finding a drug for alopecia areata because the uh, hair follicle is intact, is producing uh, hair. Uh, we just need to decrease the inflammation. And uh, what is now a hot topic in, uh, in alopecia areata are the JAK inhibitors. They are a very good method in treating uh, hair loss in alopecia areata. They have one disadvantage that uh, after uh, discontinuation the hair falls out again. But I am always saying we have many diseases in medicine and for example like uh, uh, hypertension, like diabetes, you just have to take drugs because if you discontinue the disease uh, the symptoms come back. Many plans, maybe too many, but um, uh, in terms of trichology and trichoscopy, first developing trichoscopy and going on with uh, teaching, and I have many invitations from throughout the world to teach trichoscopy, so probably this is what will be one, one of my main features. Second, uh, as you probably know, uh, I am the editor of the Atlas of Trichoscopy, and I, we have been asked for, asked for a second edition. It's very time consuming, but I think within three years, maybe we start writing the second edition. 
uh, third, uh, and I was talking with uh, my friend Yulia Ovtarenko about this yesterday, maybe there is a chance for a Russian uh, translation of the Atlas of Trichoscopy. So this is, would be a dream come true for, for many people if it works out. I think that the U Ukrainian Hair Research Society has everything has uh, great leaders, great doctors, and I think uh, probably there's nothing more to ask, but uh, if I could uh, wish something, I would wish that, uh, that uh, trichology and trichoscopy is uh, well, uh, is, is receive, the, receive the prestige it reserves. Uh, it received the prestige that it deserves. Uh, it's a case in Ukraine, but also throughout the world.